October 11th, 2014, Edible Acres. Not at Edible Acres. I'm at my friend Mark Angelini's home out in beautiful Clarkston, Michigan. He's one of the co-proprietors of the Roots to Fruits Ecological Landscape and Edible Landscaping Design. And of course, I'm still on this biochar kick like crazy, so we're playing around with some char out here. And I thought I'd document what we're doing before we do it again. We did one round already. And uh, the other night we did two cone pit methods. We had a larger one where we had a nice like downslope, almost like a dike, like a heat dike, made out of the sandy clay soil. This one produced a tremendous amount of charcoal, and this one did pretty well for us. This whole bin, Mark said he was like 40, almost 50 gallons, loaded nearly to the top. And then this one, which is probably 25 or so gallons, loaded to, this is 36 gallons. And that's more like 50 or 60. We made almost 100 gallons of really high quality biochar the other night just out of slash and top. This is all inoculated with um, some groundwater, some human pea, chicken manure. He's got this awesome nearly zero grain feeding system in here. All these lumps that he lumps up and then the chickens scratch it open again. And so we harvested some of that. It was his thought to bring that. We soaked it in water and then inoculated this char with it. So tonight we're going to clean out an old fire pit. That's Mark over there. Hey, Mark. <laughs> and uh, we collected up a ton of slash. He's in this crazy oak hickory style one acre. And um, this old hickory that, or beautiful hickory that came down. We cleaned up some tops in there. We drew it forward. Basically just cleaning up ground fall debris that can't be high quality firewood will all be our char. We're gonna easily get past 100 gallons of char tonight and hopefully we'll run it super clean, real safe. We've got water available. He passed his chainsaw through this a couple times just to facilitate being able to load these but basically it's just all you know little too rotten for firewood, little too small for firewood, too squirrely or gnarly for firewood. If it's firewood quality it goes to the firewood shed that he started building. I was helping him out the other day. Beautiful little shed. And other than that, we're going to send it through and turn it into charcoal, inoculate it, and then return it upslope into these beds. It's pretty rad stuff that we should be able to play around with tonight, so it's fun to document it. Isn't that right, Mark? I love it. <laughs> I think it's like the first time someone's face has been in my weird edible acres. <laughs> You'll never see my face, mwahaha. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We're an hour in, mm -hmm. and a far, the far burn pit was started first. That one cooked real nice and fast right off the bat, because the other night when we were doing this with these two holes, we used a shovel to harvest straight out of this pit up into a wheelbarrow that had a layer of water and then quenched it took more, quenched it, quenched back and forth, back and forth. We harvested all that out the other night. This one we left it in at the end of the night and quenched it in the hole. And it had a lot more like cold, wet inertia to get past. It's running clean now. But almost everything going through here are like semi-punky red oak, red hickory, shagbark hickory, some black cherry. So good hardwood material. By all accounts, I, you know, looking at it in the forest floor, it's something that's gonna rot away. But this stuff, it catches and goes pretty quickly. And it's running. You can try to take our word for it. it. There's a hint of smoke. But overall, it's running really clean. And we got a third hole that you cannot see because it's too dark. That will transfer. There's a cool feeling of the start of a ritual to this. Like you transfer the hot, hot ember heart of one to the new hole, get that going kind of round robin them and I imagine someday definitely seeing 12 of these in a big circle and feeling the radiant heat in the center of that. And we'll keep updating as we go. But yeah, running nicely. Really hot. Really moving along. We're two hours in. Just about now. First pit, second pit, second pit transferred over. 
to our third pit. This is the widest, but it's also the, the least deep, the shallowest, I guess. We're going to see how that works out. It's framed in stone. All of them running really nice, pretty clean. Getting a little, you know, a little bit relaxed right now. We need to start charging them up more. We got a good ember base in the second one. First one runs real nice. The third one's catching up pretty quickly. You can see it's a little, a little hotter, a little bit more brown and like woody material. We keep hitting them with uh, shovels to kind of drop embers down, and hit the shovel on the edges to send material that's smoky or punky into that hot core. All right, so as bits are ready to go, we go in there. Trevor's coming over with some more bits he just broke up and sending them into the fire. So. We'll just keep feeding it this way until it's ready to, to quench. So I'm going to say three hours, maybe three and a half hours in. It's actually the second hole that is our first one to be harvested. Pretty obviously. Again, that's like, that looks like the surface of the sun and it feels like it. It just radiates, that radiates so much more heat than the other fires that are still active. There's the first fire. There's the second fire, and there's our old, our uh, newest fire, which is going on here, which feels like it could eat more material, but we went through everything that we had tonight. So we got about 30 some odd-ish gallons, and we're, again, sorely, deeply missing the mark on how much we could harvest from this. The amount of heat, if only you could experience how much <laughs> like clean, full, deep, body-laden heat is coming off of these things. Uh, we could be pulling it in so many different ways to heat a home. But obviously we're going to take it out of here. We're going to quench it. Uh, I think we're probably going to take our steel uh, wheelbarrow with a garden hose, fill it with some water, throw it into the wheelbarrow, keep cooling it off, cooling it off, cooling it off, and sending it into barrels, which will then go into Mark's chicken yard off to the west of where we are right now. Uh, where he'll continually turn that into the compost. But all night we've been in, able to enjoy the heat of this, the light of this, and have no smoke to have to deal with. I mean, I know the video doesn't convey it, but these are smokeless and really comfortable to be around. I'd say the third fire, a little smoky, but almost better than any campfire I've been around and I've hung around a bunch. So we're going to harvest this. Thanks. The water's getting sprayed in the second hole. Oh, and yeah. it's out real quick. We're 10 seconds in. Now it looks polluted. I'll give it that. It looks smoky as hell, but I bet that's all steam. Tiny bit of gas here and there, but basically this ran so clean all night. And anything that's coming off is just steam from that pit, steam from that char. Mark made the call, we're going to put it, we're going to leave it in the pit. So the easiest thing for him to do is send it with a shovel once it's cooled down right over the fence. You can't see it in the dark. Hey, there's the fence. But just over there is his chicken scratch yard. Real beautiful system and it's just going to get laden with char. So we'll finish these off. That makes it a lot easier. We don't have to inoculate it, we don't have to harvest it. And that one looks like it's not too far off from being ready too. So we'll leave it here, stir it a bit, let it cool down. 30 gallons of charcoal? What? What do you guys think? 40? 30 Probably gallons? 30. About 32. 32, <laughs> 32 to 32 and a half ish gallons of charcoal right there. For a shovel and some water. That's straight steam right there. Yeah, that it smells clean. It smells you, like you just could get like a facial off there. <laughs> It's not your biochar face. That's just steam. So we're not we're not dealing with smoke. We we ran them as clean as I think we can do, considering how much we know about what we're doing. A lot of charcoal. That'll get inoculated in the chicken bedding for a while, and then moved straight up to the most productive spot on the highest point of the property, on swale beds, beautifully managed with tons of good uh, genetic selection and should persist for a mm, couple thousand years in the soil, let's hope. We have no way to know. <laughs> I'm finishing up in the next morning here. Um, all the pits are quenched 
and they're ready to be harvested. Couldn't show this in the video last night because it was too dark, but all these pits are just next to where the chicken yard is. And you can see what he's doing in there as he goes through with a shovel, consolidates stuff into a pile, they kick it apart and puts it back, kicks it apart. And so we're going to be adding all the biochar into that and the chickens will finally pulverize it, incorporate it in. We've topped off a few of those with char from a previous burn. And so this is where they throw their food scraps and a you know, tiny handful of grain, although I'm playing with getting it moved over to acorns because there's just pretty much every tree here is an oak. I'm really jealous. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so we've got all this char to work with. I'm going to guess we're at... Uh, let me grab a shovel. Just so you can get a sense. So this is the smallest pit. And it goes down another couple feet. Oh, two feet maybe. Um, definitely over 100 gallons that we made. Maybe 120, somewhere in there. I don't know that we're going to take the effort to really measure it exactly, but um, real nice quality. This one got a tiny bit of ash. I think we let it go just a little too long in some spots, or we didn't quench it enough with the water. But it's nice just to be able to pour the water on and let it rest overnight and then scrape it out the next day instead of handling all that heat. So this might be how I end up doing it in the long run. But there we go. Cleaned up tops of a hickory, some old down bits of red oak, some other slash and debris that was blocking up the forest. Like most of the wood had this kind of look to it, like a little too small, a little too punky to be worth using for firewood. And the real, real wet, punky stuff we just threw back into the woods. But most of it was that and this kind of stuff. You know, the kind of junk you just generally leave in the forest. But this way we can actually return back to the forest good finished charcoal that is inoculated with chicken chip. Yeah. Seems like it worked out pretty well. Thanks for watching.